My feminist identity is inextricably bound up with my identity as a feminist psychologist. So um, it would have been in the late 1970s, early 1980s, just as I was starting my academic career, I began to become aware of the restrictions on women within psychology, how few were represented in senior positions, um, how few were visible within mm -hmm. the British Psychological Society as an organisation. And um, I organised in 1983 and 4 for the social psychology section, which was the group that I was working most closely with at the time, two symposia on feminist psychology. And in the course of doing that and running them and meeting other women, came to realise that um, there was not much of an institutional space for women in psychology and women's concerns and women's research and so on. Um, and that kind of led to the beginnings of my feminism, or at least the rapid development of my feminism. I like to think it was a seed in there already mm -hmm. somewhere, um, in, in organising for and with women in psychology. And did you find that there was um, sort of a, a community that developed around you at that point of other feminist psychologists? Yes. Um, I mean, that was one of the things that was so delightful, that as soon as there was a sort of rallying point, um, feminists came out of the woodwork <laughs> in all directions. Um, in 1984, a group of, of four of us, myself, Paula Nicholson, um, Alison Thomas and Matilda de Jong, first talked about the possibility of establishing what we then called a feminist section mm -hmm. in the British Psychological Society. Um, so that was, was a year before a group of, I think, 12 postgraduate students actually started to put together a, a proposal for such a section. Mm -hmm. Following the um, postgraduate conference in 1985, um, a group of us started working to put together a proposal for a section um, and we submitted that in late 1985 and it was turned down by the Council of the British Psychological Society. The first time in its history a section proposal what, had ever been rejected. And what was the rationale for turning it down? Um, I think the essence of it was there is no recognised area of psychology that is about women. <laughs> this is just a women's group. It's a political organization in disguise, masquerading as something scientific. Uh -huh. And <laughs> you persevered on? Yes, it took another two years before um, we actually got the section approved in 1987. And we learned one hell of a lot in those two years. Mm. Um, we learned to <laughs> cultivate powerful allies. We learned how to write appropriate scientific rhetoric for the proposal. Um, and one of the things that I did was to look internationally at what kinds of struggles had happened in um, the States, Canada, Australia and New Zealand, the mm -hmm. English speaking countries basically, and discovered that there were terrific parallels that everywhere these sorts of arguments had been used every time women began to try and organise within psychology. Mm -hmm. So I was publishing stuff looking at the, the rhetoric of the organisations and how they actually used that as a form of institutional power mm -hmm. to make sure that women's organisations didn't, didn't happen or if they did they were kind of marginalised in some way that you know, really meant they would have very little effect. Mm -hmm. 